I'm Rose Nasimiu. I'm from Bungoma. I come from a family of four girls. Me being the third born. Nimesoma my primary school, but uh, during my learning, I was with so many challenges. So sometimes I had to skip schools to stay at home due to financial problems. Nikasoma primary vo, nikajaliwa, nikamaliza. Nikakuja nika join high school where pia kulikuwa na shida kidogo kidogo za school fees but my mom tried. I remember even going to school to high school sikukuwa na enough shopping. I remember when they were checking the walikuwa kiangalia hizo ma shopping za shule there are, th there are some things that I was missing like uh, I remember I did not have a bra my mom had to remove hers and iweke hapo hivyo ndo ijaze. So nilipitia tu a lot during high school but i did not even uh, finish high school nikarudi nyumbani nikakaa for like three years nikatoka shule because of lack of school fees nika drop kwa shule nikakaa two years nyumbani then from there tena my mother had to look for kutafuta tafuta pesa nirudi shule nikatoka boarding school because school fees haingeweza kupatikana so aka opt kunipeleka day school a nearby day school which was affordable so nikawa nasoma kwa hiyo day school nikasoma again when i reached like uh, form 4 ahead again to drop out of school tena because of school fees so dropping out of school nikaanza kuza mabajia started selling scrap material so nikiuza scrap hivyo the money that i get ndo nilikuwa na nachukua viazi nini nini nikaanza kuza hizo mabajia then from there i managed kulipa pesa tu ya registration ya form 4 so nikaenda kufanya form 4 after hiyo story yote i managed to get the grade that i got which i'm grateful because it was not a joke i went through a lot during that time nikamaliza shule when nilimaliza nikarudi nyumbani so i started staying with my mom and then nikaanza kuji kutafuta tafuta tu biashara tu hapa na pale because i really like uh, unajua ku struggle kidogo ndo life yani ijipe at least because my mother hakukuwa stable so i tried i tried nika nikapata pata tu biashara tu dogo tu dogo nikifanya tu promotion nini nini wakinilipa so and they used to pay me and we also had my younger sister mwenye pia alikuwa anasoma and we had to support mom so nika nikafika mahali i decided to try the other way nikasema ah well, let me try and get married because now life will quite gp so in my mind nilikuwa nasema maybe getting married maybe through my husband i will help my family which did not work out because i got in the hands of a wrong man so i could work out i had to go i had to go back home that is after maybe some few months in staying with that man alikuwa very aggressive alikuwa arrogant so nikarudi nyumbani kurudi nyumbani we started hustling with my mom ukana mom because my mom anakatu hapo nje just a shed kuna tuta watu hapo street bungoma she just hapo ndo kwenye anaka so so i started sitting there with my mom sometimes unajua ku hustle kidogo kidogo then from there mamangu akaanza kukuwa na shida ya shida ya macho so ikabidi mimi sasa ni kwa hapo hivyo kama breadwinner and actually that time my dad was just at home he was not okay hakukuwa na kazi sickly so ikabidi ni kwa kama breadwinner and then for my sisters they are also just there sasa kwa familia yetu i'm like mimi ndo ule mtu mwenye go get i just like ni jaribu hii ni jaribu hii ni jaribu hii so i decided nikasema now my mom is sick and they needed 5000 shillings for her operation shida ya macho alikuwa na kitu imemfuria kwa macho so they needed 5000 for the operation so kutafuta 5000 actually even kwa relatives we did not get the money tukajaribu kutafuta we did not get the money and my mother was actually sick literally my mother was going blind due 5000 so i said 5000 too when my mother is suffering I cannot uh, I cannot take it let me try. So I went on Facebook nika post and someone reached out. Could reach out the man I don't know him but he was a doctor. So he reached he reached out akaniambia I've seen you can you meandika and I'm really really 
going to help you nikamwambia ni sawa i felt it so he reached out na kanitumia 3000 i tried to go to the hospital nikasema i've got 3000 wasaidie mamangu but unfortunately they refused walisema mpaka amount ikuwe yote so now again i had to start looking for the 2000 shillings but i could not find the 2000 shillings so it led me again to go back to that violent man that i used to, that was my husband now at that time when tuliachana i went there so kwenda huko i really wanted help because sikuwa na mtu mwingine wa kusaidia when i tried to reach relatives kila mtu alikuwa ananiambia that moment pia they are going through their own they have a lot so i tried to understand na venye nilirudi kwa mwanaume i knew i'm going back because of my mom i needed help and he was the only person who could help me at that time so nilienda huko hivyo na na ile najua ile ile hopes za atanisaidia but uh, aku nisaidia okay he tried but aku nisaidia so nikasema i will not keep on bothering him because sasa as it is atanisaidia so i had to look for another way in that time actually nikiwa huko Uh, pia nilikuwa najaribu pia ku hustle hustle huku na huku huku na huku so i tried to reach some friends nikajaribu ku reach watu nikaambiwa the only way nifanye nini ni travel because you reach kila mtu anakwambia try and go to saudi arabia try and travel try and travel sasa nikona tu itabidi nijitume so i went to talk to the man nikamwambia me me i think i want to travel kaniuliza tu where nikamwambia they reach they, they are reach a point in life where by you just have to sacrifice everything because of your family and in this in this story here ni mamangu ndo ako involved and actually she is literally going blind because my mother could not even see usa ilikuwa inatoka kwa macho yote and i could not take it to me it was so hard to take it this is a woman who has really really struggled she gave her all just to see me nimesoma You know, sasa sasa hizi imefika time ya mimi kumsaidia and I'm like it's really it's really draining me si hizi msaidia because you know for us kids sisi usema wazazi wa play role ya kutusaidia kutusomesha and then when you grow up we have to help them but for me it was a different case because things never worked out for me so nika nikakaa chini tu siku moja just me myself nikajita tu meeting nikasema what do I do should I go to Saudi Arabia or uh, what do I do sasa nikiangalia mbele na nyuma the option was Saudi Arabia because I have to work to get that money so I said wacha tu niende Saudi Arabia because sina choice I don't have a choice the only choice yenye niko nayo ni ku just to go there but now nikasema you know nilikuwa 50 50 so I was like I want to go there to help my mom. But what if I don't return because we've seen stories about Saudi Arabia and uh, people people are dying. So nikasema tu let me just try and go. I try my luck. So I went and talked to the man when he mwambia akaniambia at first he was hesitant and niambia just be patient we we'll look for the money. But now this man is not coming. And the woman is my mother is really in pain. Si hizi hata muangalia hivi. So nikaenda nikaongea na mom with my dad nikamwambia, "Me have made a decision and my decision is to go to Saudi Arabia." Hawakukua na ile kukataa because the situation at home was getting worse every day. So awange kata. So my mom just told me, "Because you are going and you want to treat me I let you go. My dad told me people go there and they come back. You go and try. So nikaanza preparation. And then nika now the money still ananiambia hapana don't go I don't want you to go the money nitajaribu nipate. But now okay anajaribu venye anaweza but now the money is not coming and me when I see my mother I'm like I'm the kid I need to help her because ana mtu mwingine wa kumsaidia long last nika convince umwanaume but nikamwambia i've changed my mind siendi Saudi Arabia i'm going to 
to Dubai so that he could allow me to go. So when he limombia ni Dubai, that's when he said it's okay. Kama ni Dubai, it's okay. But kama ni Saudi Arabia, apana. Amware duneze ndo uko na usirudi uwawe the way we see stories on TV. So nikaanza process, nikaanza process, nika nikamaliza, nikakuja nikaka nikangoja visa itoke because i had my passport juu kuna wakati tena nili, nilitaka kuenda but si kuenda so i had my passport so nika nikapigiwa simu wakati fulani niende training sasa hiyo time ilikuwa imefika kuenda Saudi Arabia nika nikatoka nikakuja Nairobi staying with my sister in Nairobi nikingoja niki, niki sasa kuenda training because i had to come a little bit early ndo niji prepare so time ya training ikafika i went to the training nikamaliza training just after training you have to go back home tena ungoje uitwe so i had to go back home again but sasa sikwenda kuoma anaume because for him anajua dubai there is no training only saudi arabia kuna training na sikutaka kumuonyesha ati nimetoka training juu nilikuwa already nimemwambia i'm going to dubai i had to lie kenye nimekwambia i had to lie so that could give me that permission to go. So after training I went back home. Nikakasa sana ngoja visa itolewe and then corona ika kick, corona ikaingia. Sasa venye corona iliingia now everything imegwama. There's nothing that I can do. Now I cannot help my mom and I cannot go to Saudi Arabia because corona ime hit so ikabidi nimerudi kwa mwanaume nimemwambia ukweli because sasa nilikuwa naona i cannot sit there with my mom i'm not helping her it's better niende ngeta ngikana au mwanaume ivo akinyachio pesa kidogo kidogo i can at least give my mom ivo to sustain them maybe chakula ama nini because sasa macho vile imekataa hivyo she can no longer sit under the sun. Uh, ya yeah, nakaanga tu hapo nje. Si ati yako na adu kama nini she just is outside there. Even when the rain comes. Inawanyesha tu because she doesn't have a place at the place that she can say wacha kaenda akijikinga. So I used to wait the man gives me something akin pati hivyo kama ni 50 baba mani nini i just go and uh, and and i give my mom namwambia tu nimepata hii and at the same time they they live in a rental house and the rent is supposed to be paid because we have just been living there for so long now the rent is not there corona ime hit mom is sick so what next So I looked for a friend nikamwambia I I try to tell her about everything akaniambia akaniambia kazi yeye ufanya akaniambia for her anafanya kwa ba So akaniambia if you can agree niza kuconnect ufanye hiyo job But now to me nikaona okay as much as I wanted the job but si ku feel like I'm ready to work kwa ba So I went and talk to the man and the man Unajua sasa that is a family problem. For me kwangu I'm okay. I can eat, I have everything, but now it's about my family. So nikienda kaniambia why mbona unahangaika na huku na huku? So I just told him the truth nikamwambia home huko. Actually if you don't give me the 50 shillings that you always give me that means my mother atalala nja. So oh, that's why ndaka kanuliza pesa yenye mimi kuachia upelekea mom nikamwambia hey i have to talk to my mom because she cannot see and now macho imekataa kabisa and now she's the breadwinner na hizi enda kukakujua my father is also in the house very sick now i'm just there na sasa kila mtu ananiangalia tu i remember one day my mom sasa life imekataa kabisa i could not also i could not also even get that money from the man ya kuwa sustain baka rent so my mother went i think hata hakuenda because she could not even see clearly i think kuna mtu alikuja kumconnect with a, someone who gives loans wakampatia shailo kwa kampatia 4000 and she was supposed to pay 
so akalipa rent si na sasa unajua inafaa lipe hiyo hiyo loan now who will pay the loan she's not working now it's me so one day I was in the house nikapigiwa simu and I was told she loko amekujua ametoa mama yako nje amemkalisha uko nje na maskari so I had to run nikaenda niangalie what is happening on reaching there sincerely nikapata my mom ametolewa kwa nyumba amekuwa nje na my dad na my young sister so these people wants to lock the door sanika nikaenda i tried to talk to them nikaambia just give her time i'll pay the money wakaniambia tuandikishane how much i will pay na nitalipa aje so me just told them just give me one month msisumbue mamangu just give give me one month i'm the one who will pay the money they gave me one month that's so actually after that one month i didn't have even that money tikukuwa na hiyo pesa now again they came sasa kukuja they carried her because my mom hana tv so hana kitu ya man ativo kwa nyumba so akikuja akaambia mamangu atoe curtains atoe was it mattress kitanda so that they take and they go and sell i told them musichukue malazi because if you take to where will they sleep sasa hapo ni by there was a man who nikimaliza nga shule he had told my mom he want to marry me a very old man but he had money now nikasema sina choice you know sometimes life pushes you mbaka unasema let me just do it for my family because ilikuanga tu aibu people used to laugh at me so fanye kazi usaidie wazazi wako so nikaenda nikaambia mwanaume it's okay I'm ready to get married to you and you know at that time I I niko na kwangu but now ninamdanganya tu ndanipe hiyo pesa so he gave me the money when I nilipatia pesa I went and paid so tukasukuma sukuma tibo jo rent pili kwa na sukuma na huku pia na narakisha na ofisi yangu naambia just help me hata kama niaje hizi ndege zenye naona zimeanza kuenda at least munisaidie niende tu because it's just urgent So one day nikiwa nimekaa nikapata message ya agent akaniambia just prepare yourself anytime from now you will travel and I was very happy because sasa mimi niliona you traveling it's like ni break to kwetu because mimi ndo breadwinner i'm supposed to do everything kwetu na si ati because wananieka nifanye because nikiangalia mbele na nyuma You see when ule mtoto mwenye yani wazazi wanategemea they see like they have a kid who has a bright future even if you have nothing but my parents believed in me so so much any other in case of anything my mom could just say waniulize mimi because she really believed in me the fact that si hukua na kitu she could see hata sina pesa but she believed in me being her third born so ikafika wakati wa ku wa kwenda Saudi Arabia sasa nimeambiwa ni, niende sasa Nairobi nirudi Nairobi so i prepared myself and i remember I, i told my mom and my dad my mom told me enda tu Mungu atakusaidia i don't want to say anything else people go there enda juice poenda i'm going to become blind hakuna mtu mwenye anaenda kunisaidia I'm giving you my blessings just go Mungu atakuwa na wewe so I I went nikambia ule mwanaume visa ya Dubai imetoka naenda so nika nika nikaenda Nairobi I traveled nikakuja tena kukuja kufika Nairobi nikaenda kupimwa covid nikapatikana niko na covid ukaniletea results niko na covid so I could not travel sasa nikasema sasa saa hii sirudi Bungoma. Let me stay with my sister. So nikaanza kuishi na sister yangu after like one week jo office waliniambia what to do. Ni, ni kunywe ndimu, asali nini so nika nikaanza kukunywa hizo concussion. Luckily because I was so prayerful nilikuwa tunaambia God, I don't know why these obstacles are coming, but I really need to help my mom. So mimi nisaidie tu I travel. 
So after one week I think hivi nikapigiwa simu na ofisi wakaniambia come we do a test. Junao nilikuwa nimepewa madawa na everything. Na nika I went na actually nikapatikana niko negative so I was to travel the following day. So nikaanza preparations nika I traveled. On traveling nika travel nikafika vizuri. I went to the office. My boss came and akanipik na tuka tukaenda mpaka kwake and he was a good man juu tukienda vale nipitishia supermarket i did my shopping nikatoka tukaenda na yeye but reaching kwake uh, nika nikapata bibi yake kwa mlango but she did not greet me but unajua me before ningia kwa kwa hiyo nyumba i just told god one thing i have not entered this house i've never been to saudi arabia there are so many stories but god just protect me nitangulie tu just told god god go before me even the room that i will sleep prepare it for me even the food because even stories zenye tumesikia ni mingi but i'm going to this house knowing that you have gone before me so i'm just following your footsteps just be with me and protect me so nikaingia but the woman alikuwa na attitudes the woman did not greet me but because alikuwa na ball to me nikajua ah mwanamke wa mimba anaweza kuwa na attitude so nikaichukulia hivyo because of the pregnancy but my boss was okay and what my boss told me akaniambia wachana na yeye in arabic you know akaniambia ni muache by that time i could not understand arabic but my boss could talk a little bit english but there are some things niliona tu hata si lazima niambie in arabic aniambie in english because you can see what he's telling you by his facial expression so nika nikaingia and then me i expected this, the woman to lead me everywhere like aniambie this is the kitchen this is the bathroom this is your room but uh, ilikuwa vice versa now it's the man showing me everywhere so to me nikasema ah maybe because she's pregnant so the man doesn't want to bother her mom unajua i'm um, um, overwork so nikasema maybe that's why he ananionyesha but this woman alikuwa na attitude sana sana kwangu the more the days zinapita the woman has a lot of attitudes so nikashanga why is she having attitudes towards me and yet uh, i've just come to work for her she doesn't know me but ako na attitudes na mimi so time went by tukaendelea tukaendelea kukana u madam but when i see the woman genuinely sioni kama ni mama mbaya but now she's just having attitudes attitudes so nikakuwa like mtu mbaya you can just tell this person is not good but now this woman ako tu na attitude and they really talk ya na bwana yake but they had kids na watoto walinipenda sana 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 they really loved me even they, they could just come sometimes when atoroka mama they come to sleep with me so one day uh, nikasikia boss ana, anapiga bibi yake that is was, that was after maybe three months nikasikia and actually before that wacha nirudi nyuma kidogo venye tulingia kwa nyumba nikaambia boss wangu i need a favor from you I could not stay in ngoje at at the end month ilikuwa inanikula sana story ya mama yangu so i told the boss my boss i need a favor from you can you a which favor because she could, he could talk english so nikamwambia i just told him the truth i told him my mother is sick and she needs urgent treatment so my boss gave me my salary that day na sijaanza kazi so i just say it's god because akan akakubali akantumia hiyo salary ni nyumbani venye alituma my mother went to the hospital akafanywa operation ikaisha hivyo sasa stress ya ya macho ya madhe though it's still there but ilisha i was told in a good treatment but sasa hiyo wakati hata singe still singe raise hiyo pesa nyo alisema good treatment nilisema if they can treat her using that money na kuepoa kidogo at least imshikilie it's good so at least wakam wakamtibu akapewa macho ine 
akaanza tena kuenda kwa kazi yake hiyo so as i was saying now after three months i had a, my madam crying so when alikuwa analia so i was concerned so much nikakuwa like but why is she crying but at the same time nilikuwa na uoga because of the way she was treating me so nikaenda nikataka kujua sana I'm so curious because i thought juu ni mwanamke ako na mimba anything can happen or anything could could have happened so i went there and i checked up on her very quickly because nilijua maybe amepata shida only to find her to find out the man was beating her so mimi sikuwa nimejua unajua kila nyumba iko na sheria yake but me i did not know so i tried to tell my boss don't beat her so there and there my boss warned me akaniambia next time when i'm beating her don't ever come close here so nika nikaingiza ile uoga sasa nikajua me nikataza but the beating continued like almost like every two days unasikia amemchapa unasikia amemchapa unasikia amemchapa so nikaanza ku join the dots nikasema could it be the woman is frustrated because of the treatment of the man that's why ana treat TV ama ama nini because si kupenda kwake the woman was good you can tell she's good but now there's something kuna vitu yani behind the camera behind the curtains so there are things that are happening sasa venye alimpiga hivyo ndo nikajua there's something things are not okay because i don't expect any man to beat a pregnant woman even if it's not a pregnant woman i don't expect in fact si kujua ta in arabu kwa anaweza piga ati mwanaume apige bibi yake so it continued and then one day nilikuwa nimelala nikasikia mtu analilia kwa mlango wa rumi yangu nikatoka nikafungua mlango only to see my my madam sleeping there na analia and she was bleeding and you know because bado nilikuwa na ile woga because she was not talking to me nilikuwa like naweza mshika inlete shida wafikirie maybe I'm, I'm the one nimemfanyia hivyo anaweza nigeuzia that time nilijua tu ni mbaya anaweza nigeuzia so nilisimama distance na nikamuuliza can i help you naweza kukusaidia she just nodded the head na akaninulia mkono so actually she wanted me to help her stand up so akasimama na yeye hakuanelewa english could not understand english sasa venye alisimama hivyo mimi nikamshikilia tu nikamweka hapo kwa room yangu kulikuwa na kiti she sat but she was bleeding so badly so me called the boss nikamwambia your wife is really bleeding and me una, unajua i'm only a house girl i don't know what to do because she's pregnant and she's bleeding it's a bad sign akanijibu akaniambia next time hata akufe do not tell me usijaribu kuniambia wachana na yetu wa bleed so yeye kani raise eyebrows i was like but why should you leave your pregnant woman bleeding na hata hauko hata haikuhusu now that is when this woman started talking to me na akaniambia she he always beats me so she was talking in arabic but anaweka signs and then pia nilikuwa nimekaa so i could understand a little bit of arabic so i could hear kiniambia ananipiganga si mara ya kwanza ananipiganga so nikamwambia na what do, I, what do we do and now you are bleeding tutafanya aje so nikachukua simu yake nikamwambia nionyeshe basi namba ya mamako or you, you better call your mother akanipatia namba and that time i just knew she's the mother so when i just you arabic na ule ni, ni mama but alikuwa anaonekana ni mtu mwenye anapenda sana whatsapp huyo mnyanya so i texted her na nika translate into arabic you can be the girl your, your girl is bleeding and uh, she's bleeding so badly hakunijibu aliniambia tu eh hakunijibu so she kept quiet nikaletea msichana simu nikamwambia i think she's on the way coming ni kama message imemshtua akaniambia i don't think she will come so i said but kwa nini asikuje and she's your mother hakuna mama mwenye anaweza sikia mtoto wake ako na mimba na na bleed na akose kukuja so hakukuja na bwana hakuji nao nimebaki what do i do i'm the only person to help her me what i did me nika google me i googled natafuta namba ya ambulance so nikapata namba ambulance and i called them i told them there is an emergency ambulance came and carried the woman alafu i think baadaye i think they contacted the husband or what because baadaye the husband came akamchukulia manguo 
but i think the hospital will contact the husband akakuja akamchukulia manguo and akapeleka hospitali the woman was operated don akajifungua mtoto kijana so after some time kukaka usi they came back home so coming back home ndo mwanamke that's when nilijua alifanywa operation jua alionyesha hadi penye amefanywa operation so we started being close 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 tukakuwa very closer so one day akaniambia do you know why i really why i hated you nikamwambia i don't know why you hated me akaniambia kwanza i'm sorry i thought you were just like other house girls nikamwambia kwa nini she told me those are just the people wenyewe unajua sasa wanaona bwanangu anawa favor he beats me and they don't care yani hawana ile roho so me i told her no mimi siko hivyo i just love you as a sister akaniambia okay from now on once we are sisters so akanichukulia anga kama dada yake so she told me because me i don't have a sister that's why nikamuuliza and why did you call your mother to li text mama ako na hadi saa hii amesikia ume, ume una bleed umeenda hospitali umefanya operation haukuji bwanako anakupiga even after giving birth the husband continued beating the woman na hiyo CS yake tu alikuwa anamtandika tu sasa i'm concerned still mbona mamako ha react na hakuji only the woman to tell me this is my home hapa ndo kwetu nikamwambia sawa ni kwenu but at least let your mother come hata akuone akaniambia when i say ni kwetu na maanisha ni kwetu na huyo ni mama yangu but ni kwetu tu because i was born like uh, my mother was a house girl here so i have no where to go that's why when you keep on telling me twende kwenu wasikupige i tell you hapa ni kwetu so nikamwambia ndo akaniambia mimi my mother was a house girl here aka pregnantiwa na boss who is now my father na aka akaniza but she was raped so i'm just a kid wao wananiona kama mimi ni mtoto haram so nikamuliza how did i wanted to know the story so i, I asked her how did you get married here akaniambia walimpea na kwa huyo kijana because they felt like huyo kijana alikuwa na some weaknesses zenye hangeweza kupewa bibi mzuri awe so waliona tu ampe huyo kijana na huyo kijana hakutaka yeye that's why he so toxic hampendi na nini so that's when i realized this woman ni product tu ya mfanyikazi tu mfanyikazi alimza and that's why they hate her even the the mother in law anamchukia who is also the mother actually so wakaendelea tu hivyo and then she used to tell me ukiona amenichapa do not tell these people because they will come asking you kama amenichapa they feel good akinichapa ati hata walikuwa wananiambianga hata nikufe tu the way my mother died but for her kulingana na yeye mama yake ni kama aliwawa tu si ati alikufa because um, uyu boss alikuwa anaona ni kama ni competition it's like ni competition so ni kama tu alimua tu vile aliniambia so there's this day wakakuja ugeni venye walikuja ugeni waka kuna msichana mkubwa akaanza kuharas mtoto wa huyu mama mtoto wa boss wangu and then boss wangu akam huyo mama akamwambia usiharas mtoto wangu ni mtoto mdogo bado she was just a small girl i think around 3 years kambio ni mtoto mdogo when you talk to her just tell her so mtu huyo msichana akamwambia you tell me as who na akamslap akaslap madam wangu i felt like it's so disrespectful na nikamwambia usimslap because i see bwana anamchapa pia mama akikuja ni the same pia saisha imejia ki anamchapa who is also her sister sasa nikamuliza why did you beat her Sunge mchapa this is huyu ni mtu mkubwa na ni bibi ya ndugu yako why did you bitch akaniambia why are you coming into my family affairs na wakaanza kuniingilia sasa kuniingilia tena again she slapped her akaniambia i'm going to slap her do what you want sabla lim slap me could not take her because remember hapo nyuma nimekwambia she was like a sister to me so nika na mimi nikarudisha slap i slapped the girl because ni mtoto mdogo around 16 years 17 because nilikuwa naona na disrespect to them Venye nilirudisha tu hiyo slap hivyo. <laughs> simu zilianza kupigwa from huku na huku na huku wanapiga tu simu tu they are just calling. Kidogo kidogo I saw like 50 women wamekuja. Just because of that I saw like 50 women wamekuja. So venye walikuja wakaniuliza umemchapa kwa nini nikamwambia I felt like 
he is disrespecting this woman na pia mimi aliongelesha vibaya na si kumpiga hata kwa ubani hasira tu but i'm really sorry i apologize to her so they started pia mimi sasa wakaanza kuningilia kwa chapa chapa i even have cuts on my hand you know i don't think if they can be seen but walikuwa wananichapa chapa wakaanza kuni huyo mtoto jua alikuwa pale kwa sinka kashika kisu she was just she was just cutting you see though all these marks but now singerudisha because ilikuwa umati ya watu i think walikuwa tu wanipiga hata wanimalize The only thing that saved me was my boss though I was not sure nikasema wacha tu nimpigie nimwambie what is happening because now penye niko hapa it is a matter of life and death mimi nikampigia kaniuliza kaniuliza what happened tell me what happened nikamwambia akaniambia i'm coming there na sikuji hapa ati kwa sababu alislab bibi yangu i want to come there nijue kwa nini wanataka kukuchapa kwa mama wote hao Alafu najua kama venye ni destroy yao mwanaume akikuja hapo they have to hide. So venye boss wangu aliingia waka wakasambaratika waka hivi but now the mother to the boss da kaanza kumweleza what happened. Ndio boss akamwambia, "Um msichana akifanya anything, do not take. Usichukue sheria kwa mikono yako. I'm the boss, mimi ndo kafili wake. You have to tell me." So wakatoka wakaenda ikaisha hivyo na venye alienda na boss na tena anageukea bibi yake he really beat the wife so he used to beat the wife sasa mimi akimpiga the only thing i could do is just to consult her tell her all will be well and that's why the woman loved me <laughs> so ikafika mahali ndugu ya boss akakuja kuishi na sisi he came to stay with us but now after after amekuja kulikonga na meeting every now and then yani kila wakati kuna meeting kuna meeting so i was asking myself anataka kuoa ama nini because when you see arabs wanakuja kuja meetings mostly maybe it's about marriage ama mtu anataka kujenga nyumba so to me nilijua pengine it's, it's between the two but it was not that way i think they were planning to get rid of this woman because yani ni kama alikuwa amesinya kila mtu kwa hiyo kwa hiyo boma so one day nilikuwa nafua manguo sasa nikifua manguo madam wangu akakuja kanisaidia because we were close like this He, she could help me angekuja nishuke nywele zangu nitumie blood dry yake of which watu wengi wenye wako hata arabu wanajua it's not easy mwarabu hata kukualau tu ukae kwa kitanda yake but we could do that mimi personally venye tu nilikuwa nakwambia me have never seen a bad pad a bad tab ama nini but sasa mimi to to that woman i was more like a sister to her we could sit there nieke maji nieke maji nioge from there because she told me bafu yako iko nje lakini utakuwa unaogea hapa na mimi ukitaka kuoga ukitaka kuosha manguo sioshe manguo na mkono will be using my machine so tulikuwa tunasaidiana sasa hiyo siku that one day tukiosha na manguo actually ali the things alikuwa anaongea home mama to me it was very strange and they were very you know yani zilikuwa ni kama tu vitu zinashtua tu i was like why is she talking like that so akaanza tu kuongea she told me do you know these people have tried to kill me so many times they have really tried mara mingi wananipiga they wanataka ku get rid of me so nikamwambia nika but the good thing is you are still here waja kuua akaniambia lakini hao watu siku moja wataniua nikamwambia but why should you say so na akaniambia the only thing that i'm worried of is this my kid na kulikuanga na mtoto mwingine there is a boy mwenye alikuanga alikuanga anaishi dau mtoto watoto wenye wanakaanga as if they are they are mad they are not okay you know wako tu na wako tu na shida fulani tu yani unajua nimesahau jina tu imenipotea kidogo but they are au watoto huko hivyo yani he cannot talk he cannot yani hafanyi kitu yote na katu kama mtoto anakaa kama mwenye akili imeharibika so akaniambia i'm only worried about that boy and na mimi unajua sikuwa nimejua about the boy but kuna tu room enye alikuwa ameniambianga huyo mwanaume alikuwa ameniambianga you can enter all the rooms lakini this room usiwahi enda usiwahi ingia ndani if i find you here utakosana because my boss also loved me alikuwa pia ananichukulia kama dada yake so akaniambia hiyo siku yenye nitakupata kwa hii room tutakosana so now hiyo mama ndo akaniambia do you know why he want you not to enter that room because that kid is there na apendi mtu amuone wenyewe wanajua sijui i don't know what happened but kuna venye wanajua kwa nini mtoto ifai mtu amuone and then i was like hey but me have never seen the kid but now if 
kama mtoto wako hapo hivyo na kuna hiyo shida i think the kid needs help akaniambia mtoto ni mimi tu akienda maybe akienda choa ama kikojoa nini i'm just unamchenchia namchenchia tu uko nafanya kila kitu hapo alafu mtoto mlango wake alikuwa na space so boss wangu alikuwa anatupianga hapo chakula tu hapo kwa hiyo space but me i never knew me ni, ni pengine ni, ni kitu ama unajua these people wanaweza weka vitu zao pengine miungu ama nini so it never bothered me but nilijua tu amenikataza never to enter the room but now that time is now when this woman is opening up sasa ananiambia so from there akanipatia mtoto because alikuwa amefanyiwa CS sasa venye alikuwa amefanyiwa CS and in fact hata before that because mama alikuwa anga kuna wakati fulani um baba alimpiganga CS ika ika hiyo kidonde ikararuka i think ili, ilaruka kabisa sasa you could see just dam inatoka and then inafaa sasa ishonwe but now after mwanaume venye alimpiga hiyo time he left akatoka akaenda and now ju mimi alishanikata zanga akaniambia whenever you see anything do not tell me ama usijaribu kusaidia huyu mama but as a human and unajua ile utu yenye nilikuwa nayo ndani yangu and this is now my sister i could not take it so mimi nikaambia huyu mama because he has gone nataki to involve and that time i remember nilikuwa na salary yangu ya like ya like three months ju nilikuwa nimwambia landlord tulikuwa na deni kubwa so nilikuwa najaribu kumwekea hizo pesa and then i also wanted to start sending my mom tu pesa kama mzuri tu hivi kidogo anze ku deposit mahali atafute so me i preferred nikae na hiyo pesa ni change ifike kitu kama pengine 6000 ya Saudi and then i send my mom so si kukuwa na otherwise because the woman was really really suffering i just said i will give you my money you go with it to the hospital ukatibiwe akaniambia but that is your money and you've told me the situation back at home i told her Before I came here, I always prayed to God for one thing. I told God to bless me because I want to be a blessing to people. I've seen life and if only God could bless me so that I can also be a blessing to people then nitafurahia. So now I thought that time God am any bless. Hiyo pesa yenye nilikuwa nayo and now it's like God ananijaribu because I told God If you bless me I'll be a blessing to people. Now you are that blessing that I'm supposed to bless. And I have to keep my my part because God has done his part. So nikachukua hiyo pesa it was 3000. Ju sijui matibabu ama nini and I was not sure. I gave the woman. Now the problem was who will take her to the hospital. Because the woman the man had even warned us why toka kwa hiyo nyumba. But they had a driver alikuwa muindi. So nika mimi nikaongea na huyo driver because pia tulikuwa tunaongea ongea nikitaka vitu na mtuma. I talk to him na kaniambia because you are putting me in danger you will give me 1000 Saudi real. Because I really wanted this woman to be treated. Nikaambia mwanamke ampe 1000 twende na 1000 hospitali. So we went kenda na huyo mama in fact they asked about the husband and the card because hao wako na cards so nika nikaambia tu daktari <laughs> we don't know where the man has gone the phone is off we gave him the wrong number tu daktari alitaka namba but tulimpatia wrong number so hata kupiga simu haingi so mimi nikasema you can just treat her with cash turudi nyumbani so akamshona akamtreat and then the woman had also some infection because being in that situation the man could have sex with her through ba- could pity a nyuma huko so alikuwa ni kama alipata pia some infections which was severe so wakampea madawa wakamtibu and we remained with some money tuka tukarudi nazo tuka tukaenda tukapita supermarket tukafanya some shopping vitu zenye tulikuwa tunahitaji mimi na yeye and then we went home So uh ndo nilikuwa naambia hapo hivyo penye huyo mama alikuwa na where she was uh, we were washing with her you know I had to go back a little because nilikuwa nimesahau kwa kuguzia hiyo story So tukafua tukamaliza so the woman was telling me they were telling you alikuwa ananiambia one day these people will kill her and that was around uh, ilikuwa around saa 4 hivi saa 5 
na akanipatia mtoto shande the baby to me akaniambia you always love this kid sasa nimekuacha na is your kid nikamwambia haina shida me i accept him na hivyo two jokes me just knew it is just joking i didn't know that this woman saw her death coming sikujua i never knew that i never knew that was the last time that i will talk to that woman because to me she was just more than a sister so nika nikachukua mtoto as usual because sasa yame venye sasa ko na hiyo kidonda she could just go and sleep akishala la hivi mimi naenda tunatoa tu matiti mimi nekea mtoto ananyonya so that was me na yeye tulikuwa tumezoeana even simwamushi natoa tu na muwekea mtoto ananyonya kama milala so nikachukua mtoto nikaenda na yeye the woman went to the room akaniambia nataka kulala kidogo i'm not feeling well nikamwambia it's okay and that day nakumbuka huyo ndugu ya baba was just around and my boss was also just there alikuwa tu around hapo but sasa alikuwa anatoka akirudi so mtoto akaanza mtoto after kitu kama one, one hour hivi the kid now started crying nikajua anataka kunyonya nikasema ah, let me take the kid anyonye as usual tu juu nimezoea tu mimi nendanga natoa matiti nikiwa mtoto ananyonya na uma mama venye amenambia feel vizuri nilisema let me not strain her wacha tu nifanye venye mimi ufanya so when i was taking the kid to the room something you know i saw something unusual nikaona ndugu ya baba kwanza nilisikia stairs baba alikuwa anateremka so baadaye sasa nikakuja hivi niwapeleka mtoto kwa room macho yangu ikagongana na ndugu ya baba na natoka kwa hiyo room so i was like patata hauko allowed kuonana na huyu shemeji yako what could he be going atakuwa ametoka kufanya nini kwa hii room so nikakuwa na questions mingi sana 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 nikajiuliza mama ameenda kulala i can see my boss is anatoka juu anaenda chini juu room yangu ilikuwa mbali kidogo na na ya boss wangu so akapanda ste, akateremka stairs na huyu pia sasa huyu ndugu yake ndo macho yangu na yake iligongana hivi akitoka kwa room but you could tell all is not well lakini sasa singeweka mkono wangu ama ningesema ati ni hina he didn't want to even to think about anything hata kukufa ama nini ya huyo mama haikuni hit so mi nika nika nikaingia kwa room at that time actually i entered the room because huyo alikuwa anateremka as usual nikatoa matiti ya, ya mama nikaekea mtoto but now she was looking the other side na amejifunika design nyingine inajifunikangi uso amefunika na ameangalia hii side and then i was like ah unajua haikuwa imeni hit at she's dead so mimi nilijua tu she's sleeping sasa mtoto ananyonya but analia ananyonya but analia so kitu ikanembea tutoka kwa hii room kwanza so nikabeba mtoto nikatoka network kilia little did i know that huyu mbaba aliniacha niingia kwa room akijua bado niko kwa room so kubeba mtoto venye nilimtoa hapo akilia the man called me sasa ndugu ya boss akamza mtoto analia nini si nimekuacha kama unapelekea mama yake aenda anyonye nikasema eh lakini mama yake amelala hajaamuka akaniambia ni sawa rudisha huko mtoto rudisha huko mtoto kwa hiyo room mama yake amsha mama yake nikamwambia it's okay nitaenda but now before i went before i went my boss texted me akaniambia usiende kwa hiyo room don't go to that room na kama uko huko toka tu huko saa hii. Sasa venye aliniambia hivyo definitely mimi nitafuata mambo ya boss wangu because for me my boss was my big brother. I even used to call him bro tukijokiana hivyo because my boss alikuwa mtu open sana na mimi na alinipenda and he used to call me sister. So akaniambia don't enter that room. Na kama uko kwa hiyo room toka kwa hiyo room. Ai. It sounded weird kidogo but nikasema ai He has a reason but now huyu ananiambia mtoto anawapigia kelele nimpeleke kwa room. But now my boss is telling me don't enter the room. Sasa mimi nikafuata ya ya mwajiri wangu definitely. So sikuenda. Sikuenda kwa room. Kidogo kidogo tu naona gari zimekuja hapo ya mama yake, ya ndugu yake mwingine, ya madada zake wamekuja. And when they came, they came directly kwa room ya huyo ya huyo mama. Only to come and find out huyu ndugu ya, ya baba alitaka niingie kwa room ndo wale wanipate and then i will be accused of killing the woman 
but because of God, God used my boss to save me. So si kupatikana kwa room nilikuwa tu nilikuwa tu kwa room yangu. And that na all this while mimi sijui mama amekufa and I don't know what these people are coming to do because mimi sijui what is happening. Sasa venye walikuja I was so concerned. So nika text boss wangu nikamwambia what is happening? At first ndugu yako alitokea kwa room alikuwa anateremka stairs sahi kwa mama wamekuja. What is happening? That is when my boss aliniambia huyo uh, madam amekufa. Ah No, because this is someone this is this is my sister me me usema this is my sister so amekufa amekufa haji but you have been here with her amekufa haji kaniambia she died she's dead haji amekufa haji but now kuangalia sasa wakati nyi nilisema now let me at least go and look at happy you watu wameingia so when i went it's like aligongwa huku nyuma because you could see blood blood inatoka huku kwa mdomo so it was evident that aligongwa alafu kiangalia huyo ndugu ya ya boss wangu alikuwa na tule tu unajua kuna hongana tule tu blood stain hivi tudogo tudogo zilikuwa kwa kanzu kanzu yake but it's like he didn't notice So nobody needed to tell me that this guy kuna kitu amefanyia huyu mama. And this woman had already told me because aliniambia one day he will come to kill me. So nikajua tu ni yeye. And now huyu akajua ni mimi, nimejua amemuua. So akaanza kunitafuta mimi sasa. Huyu ndugu ya ya kafili wangu akaanza kunitafuta. So akanitafuta siku nyingine akakuja kuniambia even before they buried her mimi kwanza nikachukuliwa nikaulizwa napelekwa wapi wakaniambia the police wants to ask you something so nikaenda tukaenda polisi wakaniuliza wewe ndo ulikuwa na huyu mama hivyo hivyo tu maswali za kawaida did, did she say she's sick did she tell you anything did you see anything suspicious but now my boss had told me if anything ask anybody ask you anything about e nyumba na ima tanga just tell them you don't know so nikasema sijui and uh, nikarudishwa nyumbani so that that when i realized that uh, they wanted to see they wanted to see kama najua anything ndo pengine hata pengine waniue because wanajua niko na evidence na niweza sema ni huyu ndali wa huyu mama but my boss told me just play it cool usionge so i used to follow what my boss tells me kila kitu yenye boss wangu ananiambia that's what i i say So wakachukua document zangu, wakapeleka polisi, kila kitu wakapeleka huko and I was told ati niko under investigation. So nikawauliza investigation kiaje but my boss told me hata ukiambua kitu yote wewe kubali tu. So one day one day actually I think uh, I think now my boss brother aliona tu sasa huyu inabidi sasa ni mtoe sasa huyu pia inafaa tu hata pengine ni muue so nika nikaenda nika nikaenda nikaoga sasa bafu yangu ilikuwa nje but when my madam was there i used to shower from her bathroom jubwa yake alikuwa hata halalangi kwa nyumba junasikia alikuwa pia na bibi mwingine kwingine so nikatoka kuoga kuingia hivi kwa nyumba nikifunga hivi mlango i realized there's someone behind my door kuangalia ni yeye nikamwambia what are you doing akaniambia I want to talk to you sijakuja maneno but to me nilijua amekuja tu sasa kuniua because pale hakungekuwa na mtu waku, wa kunitetea akaniambia just want us to talk akaniambia I have an offer for you nikamwambia offer gani na ni kwa nini akaniambia I want to give you money so that you keep quiet nikamuuliza keep quiet about what and that's when he told me keep quiet usiambie mtu kama uliniona hiyo siku nilitoka kwa room yani alikuwa ananitafuta maneno mimi nikamwambia ah but me i just knew umetoka tu kwa room si kujua anything ina happen kumbe alikuwa anataka kujua kama ninajua anything na niko sure ni alifanyao kitendo but now my boss had already also informed me kuna wakati watakuja kukupea pesa but kataa lakini sema tu hujui in that time had came had come so nikakataa venye nilikataa akasema sincerely hujui nikasema sijui 
akaniambia ni sawa let me go so venye alienda still ni kama halipo yeye yeah, aliridhika sasa kwenda kurudisha ripoti kwa meeting ni kama wale watu kuna wenye bado walikuwa na doubt because boss wangu aliniambia mo is coming so just be ready but he used to inform me unajua so kuna siku akaniambia they are coming kuna mtu anakuja saa hii usiku hii she is bringing my mom but hawakuji kwa uzuri my mom is coming there are some things they want to do nataka kukufanyia and you know at first uko venye nilislapping yo msichana walinikatanga mpaka nywele yangu ilikatuanga ili kabisa hapa hapa sina nywele ni ni kidogo tu ndio imeanza kumea so akaniambia tena watakuja kufanya the same thing so akaniambia what you do nataka upige tu nduru at your highest volume sasa hii tu kabla wakuje the sasa tu vile nakwambia hivi and it, it was around 11 pm usiku so i did that nikaeka nduru nikaeka nduru akanuliza ni nini siongei because my my kafil told me boss wangu alinembe just pretend as if you are dying yani kuwa tu yani ile tu yenye italeta commotion watu wakuje so i pretended nikapiga nduru nikapiga nduru wakaleta ambulance ambulance ikanibeba and i was not even sick nilikuwa tu sawa but now you boss wangu amenembea fanya hivi and i had to do Kenye ameniambia. So from there nikapelekwa OC. Siku of course ni kama boss wangu alikuwa amejua na alikuwa ameongelesha huko juu pia alikuwa daktari. So si ati nilitibiwa nilienda tu I think alikuwa tu anajaribu kuni kuni kunitetea yani nisipatikane na ma, na vitu mbaya ama wasiniue ama wafanye kitu nyingine alikuwa ameplan. So from there my boss told me the next move. Nataka nikutoe kwa hii nyumba uende kwa nyumba nyingine nikamwambia but how it's not possible sasa siko sure because ndio ananitetea lakini sasa hii kuniambia na kutoa kwa nyumba i was like ai hapana kwa nini unitoe kwa nyumba but now on the other hand i trust him because ameni save sana ingekuwa ti yako na ubaya na mimi haingekuwa hivyo so akaniambia i'm going to take you to the nataka upige ofisi uambie hauko sawa kwa hii nyumba unataka kuchenchiwa na wakikuuliza ni nini hata usimention about the death and everything sema tu asitaki kuna venye kuniendelea mimi wani treat vizuri na and we, of course they will call me because I'm your boss na mimi wakini call nitasema it's okay kama umeamua kuchange nyumba ni sawa so that happened actually venye ile happen hivyo nika nika nikapigia ofisi ofisi kaniambia kama unataka kuchange nyumba then the boss will bring you tukaenda na boss wangu Mimi pindenda na boss wangu kumbuka bado document zangu mimi ziko tu polisi waliniambia mpaka wamalize ndo wanipatie investigate wanipatie document zangu tukaenda na boss wangu The good thing is mimi sikujua already huyu mwanaume ameongea na rafiki yake ati anichukue ni kwenye mfanyikazi wake but what he assured me he told me ninda kupatia mtu mzuri sana and I'll be checking up on you nataka uende mali penye can easily access you na kweli akanipeleka kwa nyumba mzuri nikachukuliwa huko nikakaa huko he was there he was always checking up on me na pia alikuwa bado ana insist ananiambia nataka tu kama hata inawezekana uende tu ata home nikasema ni sawa haina shida sasa juu wale kumbe sasa wameshajua niko kwa nyumba gani na still ndugu yake ni kama tu bado tu atanitafuta na ndugu yake alikuwa rafiki sasa ya huyu boss wangu mgeni so aka find out hiyo information niko huko so sometimes you could see ndugu atirafikia boss anakuja ukiangalia ni huyo mwanaume sasa pia nikakuwa siko comfortable though this boss was very good huyu pia huyu wa mwisho huyu mwenye alini boss wangu alini connect na ye. he could do for me shopping he could alikuwa very very good man alikuwa mwanaume mzuri sana very good man and i don't think alijua ni nini inaendelea yenye ilikuwa imefanyika huko because i did not open my mouth i've never told anybody sikuwa isema anything na sikuwa iambia mtu yote alafu sasa unajua hata kama nilijua ukweli i cannot do unajua uweze enda ushitaki muarabu huko kwa kwa nini zao kwa polisi zao atusema ati alifanya hivi na hivi first thing sikukuwa na evidence ati nilimshika akifanya the next thing ni za mshitaki hivi and then unajua watu wanajua nanga And then it happens pengine na mshitaki tena kwa ndugu yake mwingine ama kwa rafiki yake inileta shida we have had cases penye watu wanapoisoniwa police station wanapoisoniwa wapi so si kutaka shida nikasema tu ah let it just be because even boss wangu aliniona akaniambia don't even mention it anywhere that's why mimi najaribu ufanye nini utoke uende but now mimi nilirealize 
hii kitu ni kama it was planned by the family ilikuwa imeplaniwa tu vizuri they get rid of this woman and actually they decided to use the the brother because they don't have to get in good terms so nikaka kwa hii nyumba mpya nimekaa nimekaa i stayed there for for like six months nimekaa now tena na uhule boss wangu mwingine akaniambia now we have to do something rudi nyumbani nimepata documents zako because i was to nilikuwa nikuje but now document zangu hakuna kaniambia nimepata document zako now we have to do something you have to come home you have to go home jo niko na document zako unajua sasa bado mimi kwa system nasoma ule ndo boss wangu huyu wa hapa haisomi huyo huyu haizi nisafirisha ni ule tu so akaniambia i'm the only person who has powers to go and travel jo bado document zako zinasoma mimi so akaniambia i want us to do something ndo uende nyumbani nikamwambia okay i'm ready akaniambia just start crying and tell them someone at home has died and you need to go urgently and actually that is what i did and to my surprise nilianza kulia kama leo jioni yake boss wangu akaanza kuni kunibukia ya ticket so akaongea na huyu because ule aliniambia go and tell that man mwambie huyu boss wako mgeni tell him you want to go home wende uzike alafu urudi na umwambie because nyinyi ni waislamu iende matanga inafaa ikue haraka and even actually I'm si ati muislamu i only decided to pretend to be a muslim because of my madam mwenye alikufa kuna wakati alitaka kwenda maka she really wanted to go to maka kufanya maombi and now boss wangu alikataanga so now nikaambianga boss wangu most of muslim and i want to go to maka na juu alikuwa anga ananifanyia almost kila kitu yenye nataka nilifanya tu hivyo ndo huyu mwanamke apate nafasi ya kwenda maka so tukaenda wote bata walienda kuswali mimi nikadanganya niko periods so siwezi enda kuswali only wanted this woman to go there because alikuwa ananiambia nataka kuenda huko so that was it wakanikatia ya ticket that day hiyo usiku nimelia kama leo usiku yake wakanikatia ya ticket ule akakuja akapeana document zangu kwa huyu akafeel and that is why i got to travel back home but from there there are so many lessons in Milan hata kama unaishi na mtu even if the, the woman treats you bad but ukiona hata kama bwana yake anampiga ama you see she's down just try and give her a shoulder to lean on tusikuwe wale watu wenye ukiishi na mtu you stay with somebody you are a house girl now that unaona pengine bwana yake anampiga ama she's going through something or financial problems now we want to take that as an advantage to revenge wende uanze kuambia majirani oh iko hivi na hivi unajua mama fulani You know we house girls don't know what always happens in the in the house. So that's what I can say. Always learn to keep secrets. Hawa watu wanatuamini na siri zao because we know their bedroom issues. That's why mimi niliamua kuwa close na boss wangu, yo madam ndo maana I could sacrifice my salary nimsaidie. So that's all I, that I can say. Yeah.